All right, now here we're going to look at what are called trigonometric proofs. And this is very similar to the simplifying tree expressions video that I did earlier, except the one difference is you're going to be told what the expression should be simplified to. So rather than just say, you know, I could, a simplifying problem would mean like I, I, I sort of get rid of this equals to and I just say simplify this expression and then you simplify it and you get what you get. A proof is, is I mean, this is a, a statement that's true and you have to show the intermediate steps that would evolve this left-hand side into the right-hand side. So for this first example, I'd like you to copy down. I'm, I'm not going to write it down. I'm just going to show you how a proof like this looks. So our goal is to show that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So what we always do is we start the proof. We start the proof with the left-hand side. So here's the left-hand side. All right. I just copy it down. And then I start to change this expression as though I'm simplifying it. But my goal is at the end, down here, I should have an equals 2 as my last step. So in this sort of train of, of simplifying, I need to get an equals 2 over here. So, so if you look here, I mean, the, the, I factored the top, factored the top here. So that's all this is saying. And I so I'm, sh I'm showing all my steps. So this is equal to this. And then look carefully what happens here. This this step from here to here is arguably arguably it can be omitted. Some of you might you know see that x minus one divides x minus one, and x plus one divides x plus one here. But I made it a little bit more explicit here. So see if you can understand why this is equal to this. Okay, and then see why you can see if you understand why this is now equal to this x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 is a 1, and x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 is a 1. Okay, and then right, when you multiply times 1, that has no effect. And then I also can distribute that negative, right, distribute that negative to give me this. And now we're almost done. Right, this simplifies to 2 because the x minus x cancels. So the point of this is for you to see that I started with the left-hand side, and every Everything after the equal signs, these are all equivalent expressions, right? This is equal to this, is equal to this, is equal to this, is equal to this, is equal to 2, right? But I, the, the key is we know that this is a true statement. Your goal is to show how you evolve. You take this side and evolve it into the right-hand side. That's the whole point. So we're going to do this with trig identities. So here's our first one. So we need to prove that this left-hand side equals the right-hand side. We need to prove that cosine squared times secant divided by 1 minus sine squared is equal to secant. All right, so we're going to go down and we're going to write proof. And we're going to start with, now you could start with either side, but it's more natural to start with a side that's complex and, and sort of make it, reduce it to something simpler than it is to start with something simpler and build it up. Okay, it's it's much easier it's much easier to uh, start with something complicated. So we're going to start with the left hand side. So I, I literally copy down the left hand side. Okay, I copy down the left hand side. And so I'm gonna, now I want to say equals. Now I'm, I'm going to change this. This is like I'm simplifying it, but the 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 nice thing is I know what I have to reduce it to. It has to reduce to secant. So like my final step, I'll, I'll write it like way over here. My final sh step should be equals to secant of theta. All right, so now we take a look at what we're allowed to do. We're allowed to substitute in identities. So are there any identities that come to mind here? Well, let's see. 1 minus sine squared, if you look on your identity sheet that I gave you that's equal to cosine squared. So so that means that I can rewrite this. I'm going to leave everything the same except the thing I'm substituting in for. So this is cosine of theta times secant of theta divided by, and I'm going to make the substitution. This is just cosine squared. And now 
this is nice, right? These, these are being multiplied in cosine squared divided by cosine squared is equal to 1. And so I get, when those divide, I get precisely what I wanted, equal to secant squared. And in math, and you know, one of the things people like to do at the end of proofs is like to put a little, put a little square here, as, as though like, okay, I'm done with the proof. That's sort of what that means. It's almost like a period. Okay, but it's like simplifying, but you know where you have to go. Okay, and you get report, you get awarded points, you know, from me, based on the steps that you. Sh I mean, you have to show all your steps. If you just write this down and then write equals secant theta, I have no idea that you know how to use substitution, uh, how to use the identities. Or that you can you can mathematically prove that a, a, a expression like this equals that. So let's try one more or a couple more more examples. So I had to prove this. The left hand side equals the right hand side. So okay. So I'm going to copy down the left hand side. Now my goal is to say that this is equal to cosecant squared. So, you know, in the end, I should be having an equals cosecant squared. And I'm going to show how to get there. Cosecant squared minus 1 is an identity, I believe. I believe it is equal to cotangent squared. So I can make that substitution. And 1 minus sine squared, I know, is equal to cosine squared. So the, those are identities that you should have in front of you or that you should be referring to. So this, this step is warranted, right? The top is simply equal to cotangent squared and the bottom is cosine squared. All right, now I want to get cosecant squared and I know it doesn't look like I have anything here that could help me, but I'm going to change everything to be in terms of sine and cosine. So I want to make the top in terms of sine and cosine. So what is cotangent? Cotangent is cosine over sine. So I'm going to write this as cosine squared divided by sine squared. That's my top. That's just this part. And I divide that by, I'll divide that by cosine squared. And now let's see how this interacts. Um, the bottom is, I want to write the bottom as a fraction too, cosine squared over 1. So now I can do this as... I can view this as a divide, um, dividing fraction, which means that I multiply by the reciprocal. So that's the numerator. If I divide by cosine squared over 1, that's like timesing by 1 over cosine squared. And this is nice because cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1. So this equals 1 divided by sine squared. Oh, but 1 divided by sine squared, because 1 over sine is cosecant, 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared. So here's my last step. So this, this equals this. So I'm done. But notice I showed every step along the way. Okay, and that's the key idea. Let's see, I think I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop there.